Welcome to this Way to Fire YouTube video. It's me, Andy, and I am playing solo again. Uh, this time I am playing another Nordic Weasel game. This one is Bug Hunt. So it uses a lot of the similar mechanics from Five Parsecs and the other um, Nordic Weasel games. Uh, and you can actually tie it in with your Five Parsecs games if you want to, but it's slightly different in the fact that Really, this time you are a bunch of soldiers, military types, uh, following missions um, to eliminate alien threats, really. Um, various different types of aliens or monsters, hence the term bug hunt. Um, it has a bit of a aliens feel, so as I understand it, there's objectives to be done, and you've got to get them done as quickly as possible, and if you take too much time, then what will happen is the aliens or monsters or whatever will start swarming you more and more and more and putting more and more pressure on you. So it's a goal is to work against the sort of clock of the AI really to try and get your objectives sorted and your mission completed as quickly as possible. So slightly differently from the five past six games you still have a crew, a key sort of heroic um, characters. So I've got three, I've got the three on the building here. So on the left, we've got Gunnery Sergeant Hayden Frantizi. Uh, she has a service pistol and a boarding sword. They have a bit of a background as well, which um, so she uh, originated on a scientific outpost, worked in the cavalry, um, and was involved in an extended campaign, which gave her some extra experience. Then next to her in the middle, we've got Sergeant Giron de Lang. Now he has a service pistol and a combat rifle. He was also brought up on a scientific outpost. It was on the naval vessels, part of the ship's crew, and spent a lot of time patrolling in the fringe of space. So he's not quite as experienced. And then next one along, Corporal Ludovic Tranowski. Uh, she grew up in a mid-tech world worked in the scouts and has patrolled in low intensity areas so it hasn't quite again had as much experience. The difference here is not only do you have your key uh, crew but also you have supporting troops. So as you can see here on the floor in front of the building I have been supported by a team of five colonial militia with carbines and a team of four fire support troops with carbines as well. So, um, we'll have a look at the table and we'll talk about how it's different in a moment. So our team has received a distress signal, followed quickly by everything going dark. From the colony of Gravicus Minor on the planet Thrisk, Delta Quadrant of Zeus Sector. This is the town centre of Gravicus Minor, where we will be playing the game. I don't know what we're coming across yet. Uh, the way this game is, uh, we've set it up as an urban centre, obviously. It seems like things have gone a little bit odd. There's a few barriers down, there's a few bits of detritus in places. Seems like some people may have left in a hurry. There are three objectives. One in the centre of the table there, another one here. I've got left the dice on there to show that um, what will happen at those objectives when I get to them. And then there's an objective here which I have a one on. So you roll for each objective, there are three objectives each game, and you um, can play them wherever you want, um, as long as they're more than eight inches from each other. And you roll the dice to see what the, what the thing is that you have to do when you get to objectives. And actually a one means you remove the objective, so I'm going to take that one away in a moment. Then there are um, six other tactical objectives around. So these are here one, where all these data points are too, another one just there by the bins, uh, another data point on top of that building up there, and another one on top of that building there. Is that all of them? Um, yeah, I think so. I can't remember. Um, and then you'll see these, I'm using these mountain, mountains, uh, sorry, mansions of madness uh, tokens to show where there are signals of uh, possible um, activity which I can't do anything about until I see a bit more closely what they're like. So there are three of those around at the moment because it's only a low priority, it's a routine sweep. I mean colonists have probably just you know 
shut down, set off an EMP device and shut down their comms. There's probably nothing going on, so we'll just do a quick sweep and then head back in time for uh, biscuits. Uh, the table we're going to play on is actually only 3x3, three three, this is a 4x4 four four table, so I'm going to stop at the edge of that road there and stop at the back end where the um, statue is. That'll be a line across there, will be the back. And actually that's where I'm going to be coming on from. I'm coming off on the starport where the cargo ships are. There I should be coming forwards onto the table. And like I say, the one objective there and the other one over here. So I've actually got quite a long way to go. Um, so we'll see how that pans out. Uh, so I will deploy my models over there. And then we'll go through the turn sequence. Using a similar sort of pattern as other 5 past 6 games. But of course we also have the possibility of getting more of these... Um, unknown activity uh, markers and of course if we get close enough and we can see them we might even find out what is going on in the colony of Gravicus Minor. So here we are uh, at setup. I have put my major characters down and then their supporting teams. So over here I have Gunnery Sergeant Hayden Frantizi and then I have Corporal Ludwig Tronowski and around the Corporal I've put down my um, fire team. Over here I have my Colonial Marines and in the corner there Sergeant Giron de Lang. Um, I have these two objectives to get to there. Oh, I'll tell a lie. Only one objective because this one actually has been removed. So one objective there and another objective over there. Uh, which I am intending to get to. There are these contact points here, here, and another one just under there. If I get within six inches of that, uh, and it's not behind cover, I can roll to see what it is, if there's anything there, or if it's just a large rat or something. Uh, and then there are these tactical locations, these ones here, here, uh, the other sort of consoles and so on and so forth, a few over the back there. Uh, if I get to those again, then I can <clears throat> roll to see what happens. They're likely to do things like shut down contact points and so on and so forth. So, <clears throat> this game uses a very similar principle to the other five Parsec style games. So I will roll a dice for each of my major characters for their reactions and one dice for each of my teams so I'll have a total of five dice. Um, if they roll under their reactions, um, or equal to or under their reactions, then they can act in the quick phase. And then there will be the uh, aliens phase. Uh, aliens is just a general term. Um, and in the aliens phase, we'll move the aliens first, if there's physically aliens on the table. And then we'll move the contacts as well. The contacts will be random when they move, and I'll go through that when we get to move them. Um, and then if there's any of my guys who are still to go, they will act in the slow phase. There's one slight difference as well here to other five parsecs style games. I can choose if people are acting in the uh, fast phase. I can choose to put them on a sort of an overwatch where they can then keep their dice next to them and shoot in the um, enemy phase, in the alien phase, rather than... Uh, in the fast phase. Uh, if they don't get a chance to shoot anything, then it's not wasted, they can still act in the slow phase. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll roll my dice and we'll come back in a second. So this is what I rolled for my reactions. That would normally be an excellent roll, but unfortunately even my major characters only have a reaction of one, and my teams only have a reaction of one. So as no dice came up with a one, all of my teams will act in the slow phase. So what I'm going to do now is take those dice away and then do the alien phase. So the way it works, if there were aliens on the table, they would move first. But as there are not, uh, we do the contact. So we'll start with one closest to me. So that's this one under here. The way it works is I don't know what this is. So it'll either move by chance or aggressively. So I'm going to roll two dice. The black one will be the aggression and the white one will be the chance. I'm also going to roll a d10 and the pointy end will be the direction if the chance comes up. So aggression, if that's the higher number, then they'll move that many inches towards my 
closest model. If the white one is the higher number, the chance, then they'll move in the random direction that the D10 shows. Okay, so let's see for this first one. Uh, oh, of course, it's the same. So if it's a draw, they don't move at all. So that one stays as it is. We'll then go over to this one over here. Uh, that's a chance, and it goes that way. So we're going to move that one four inches over there. So it goes literally just along that little corridor in there. And then we have another one over there to do. And that's, I rolled a five and a one, so it's going to go five inches in this direction, which is actually going to be the edge of the table, so we'll just stop it there. I think that's what you do. I'll just double check. Oh no, if it reaches the edge of the table, it is removed. So we're down to just two contact points now. Um, if there's ever less contact points than the priority of the mission, I think they spawn again. So it's only a mission one, level one priority mission here. And I've just done my slow actions now, so all I've done is moved everybody up and then dashed for another two inches. So the way they work is they can make a move action and then a separate action if they want, such as shooting or interacting with terrain. Um, if you don't want to do that second action, you can make a dash, which gains you another two inches of movement. What you cannot do is shoot and then move. So um, I moved at the corporal, I moved up my gunnery sergeant. I moved up the fire team, I moved up the colonial marines, and I moved up my sergeant over there. The idea is I'm going for this tactical location, this tactical location, and then they'll be able to pincer down onto the objective in the centre, uh, and then head on over to that one over there. Um, I can't see anything, I'm not within six inches of any token, so I can't see them, so I don't roll for spotting them now. Um, I have just remembered as well, because these guys are in their teams, they would actually get plus one to their reaction, so they could have gone in the quick phase, although they wouldn't have done anything different. Um, they've got a reaction of one normally, and they get plus one if they're all within three inches of a nominated figure, and you can change the nominated figure each time. But generally it'll be this guy who looks a bit more sergeant-like, and this guy who has a slightly different gun than the others. Um, so yeah, at the end of round one, just a little bit of movement. Not a lot of um, contacts yet. I'm sure that will change as the game goes on. So at the very start of a turn, you roll for um, new contacts, and the chance of a new contact is you roll one dice per uh, the level of priority. So it's only a priority one mission. So uh, if that one dice comes up with a d6, as mine did, I get a new contact, and that new contact here, I've rolled a d10 to say the point is going to come on at this point on the table over here. Now, if I was within 12 inches and could see it, I would be able to immediately shoot at that contact as it appears. Uh, but I can't because I'm out of line of sight from the sergeant down here. So, um, the other thing we should do um, is I then roll my priority. And I've done it properly this time. So, these guys have got higher numbers. But I've got a 2 and a 1. So, these get plus 1 priority because they're in a team. So I'm going to activate this team and I'm going to activate the Corporal uh, in the fast action section. And the idea is they're going to come around, reveal whatever this contact is, and then see if they can deal with it. Right, so as we advance through the deserted town, you can see there's a few fires that have gone on. It all seems a bit strange. You're hearing some mumbling noises in the distance, but can't see anybody yet. Where has the population gone? So I moved the corporal up here, and that allowed her to look around this corner and reveal the contact. And it is a shambling mass of the local populace. So when you come across and spot a contact, you roll to see whether it either disappears, moves somewhere, or it um, turns into the monsters, or the aliens, that are for the scenario. And I actually rolled these earlier. So... Um, it is reanimated uh, dead. So the populace, some strange outbreak has killed them and then turned them into these walking dead. So uh, I still have an action left because spotting doesn't count as an action. So, well, she's going to try and shoot one, of course. So in the open, that first one should only need a three to hit. Does hit. They have a toughness of four. So if I 
exceed the toughness, I will kill one. If I equal it, I will stun them. Uh, I have equaled it. Uh, actually, equal or exceed, so that hat will take out one of them, which is nice. Um, that does. I did roll six. It was a random number that you get. So um, the fire team now has its target to uh, try and deal with some mayhem. The fire team, I'm going to use one of the optional rules that they aren't going to move. Instead, they're going to use that action to aim. So they can clearly see a couple of those without any color. So I would hit on threes because we're in six inches. I have rolled these dice, so four hits, which is phenomenal. Uh, I now need to get um, their toughness of four or more. Uh, so I took out two, uh, and two are stunned. So I'll take off those first two, and I will push back an inch and stun the next ones I would see. Okay, so because they've been revealed in this turn, they don't actually act uh, in this turn, uh, the contacts, so they won't move towards me. They only move three inches to reanimate a dead, but what they do is if they fight me in brawling and kill me, they will turn me into one of them. Uh, so that's not so good. So I want to keep moving, really, and deal with them. So they won't do anything, but the other contacts on the table will move. We'll just catch up with the end of the turn. So in the contacts phase, uh, this contact has moved further away. The other contact that just appeared then walked off the table. So this removed, which is a bit annoying. Um, this colonial militia team moved up to get this tactical objective on the roof. Sergeant moved up there. And my gunnery sergeant moved up and took out one more of the shambling dead. So I need to get rid of those last couple and then I can claim, hopefully go and claim that objective in the centre of the table. Uh, I must say it's looking not too bad at the moment. But obviously I'm sure there'll be lots more of these uh, contacts and animated dead coming on. Particularly as I ideally have to get all the way over there to that second objective uh, to have a chance of calling in rescue. So... To get the rescue, you roll uh, 2d6 and add the number of objectives you've got. Uh, obviously, there's only two on a table, so maximum I can add to that is two. And then a ship will arrive in a certain number of turns, and that's the best chance of getting my troops off the table healthy. If not, I can get off the table uh, once I feel it's time to go by walking off a table edge, but there's a chance then that the aliens will capture me at some point off the table and I won't get back to base and so it's a higher chance of losing your major characters which I obviously want to avoid if possible. So at the start of round three um, there was no new contacts from the beeps uh, test um, which you do at the start of every round so I've rolled my um, reactions. I actually got quite a good roll so I've got two twos so I've put that on the two fire teams because I get a plus one reaction to clone the marines there on the building who are going to go up, take this tactical objective and fire down onto those. And then the fire team will also be able to fire onto those. And I put another one on my corporal, who's going to try and get over there to get that tactical objective over there. So we'll come back in a second when we see what they do. So at the start of turn three, the uh, Colonial Marines moved up here. They Three of them fired down onto the um, undead. And they uh, all hit them, but they weren't able to actually wound one, which is disappointing. The other two, uh, sorry, four of them fired down. One of them then interacted with the tactical location and managed to generate a distract, which uh, means that no zombies can move in two inches of that. Uh, it will last until I roll a six in a turn, and it might disappear. Uh, that's not going to make a lot of difference in the game here. Then I moved up the fire team. They wanted to move up and then fire onto those, trying to take them out. Uh, two of the four hit and didn't wound. So those zombies have got bits blown off them, but they are not dead. Uh, I, so, of course, they will be able to reach, or one of them will be able to reach one of my fire team. But I had one more quick action left. So my corporal ran over to this tactical location over here and interacted with that. And they managed to get, say, I think it's a decoy is what it is, which means that no um, aliens within 18 inches can move in the next alien phase. Well, the next alien phase was about to start. So... Actually, he has just saved them from being uh, munched, potentially, by one of those zombies. Then we go into the alien phase. There's only a bit of contacts to do, because these aliens obviously aren't going to move. And the final thing to that turn, uh, gunnery sergeant moved out here, fired but missed. Uh, my other sergeant moved over there, but he had to dash. So he's sort of just scoping around the back, I think. I then rolled for the beep test to see if there were any... Um, more contacts, there are not, and I rolled to see if this thing stopped. It did not, so we'll go into round four. 
In round four, I only got one quick action, but I put it on the militia at the top here. So five dies firing down. I took the extra alternative action of aiming as well. I rolled three ones and then re-rolled those and I ended up getting enough hits and wounds to take out the last of those zombies, leaving the central objective clear. Um, obviously, I will now do the one remaining uh, contact, which is over there, and then we'll be on to the rest of my team acting in the slow phase. So the only other actions I did was I moved both the gunnery sergeant and my other sergeant uh, towards this central one because I have an objective here of hacking, which requires a tech test. Um, and they both have a tech of one, so they're more likely to do it than the fire team would be. Fire team and my corporal have just moved up the street, heading towards the other objective, uh, which is also a hack as well. The contact over there didn't move, so at the end of round four, that's it. Um, only a single contact on the table. Uh, I will roll at the start of turn five for another contact potentially on the beep sir test. No, it would need a six because it's only a priority one mission. So it's looking relatively routine this mission at the moment. Hopefully we'll achieve things. It's not been as big a challenge so far, um, but maybe we'll come across more things shortly. So at the start of turn five, I only got one quick reaction, which I put on my gunnery sergeant. He tried to open or hack the objective there, so it's a 1d6 needing a 6. Uh, you get plus 1 for each point of tech you have. He has 1 point of tech. I rolled a 1. So he did not uh, able to do that. It, he didn't move and it requires his combat action, so that's his turn. I then did the only uh, contact and I rolled a double for that, so you have a chance and an aggression dice. If they're both not the same, then it doesn't move. If the aggression dice is higher, then it moves towards the closest enemy. If the chance dice is higher, it moves in a random direction. So that leaves me with the rest of my squad. So um, let's do the uh, other sergeant down there, Delang. He also fails to hack. He has a tech of one as well, so they're both going to carry on doing that. Uh, Corporal's going to move over to that objective, and the fire team's going to move up behind to provide support. These guys are sitting quite pretty here, but they're probably going to move down to take up a better defensive position around the two sergeants as they ineffectually try to hack that uh, objective. There are a few other tactical locations around, but they don't actually do that much in the game. They don't score me any points or anything, so there's four more around, but I don't see the point in really heading over to them. Uh, we'll try and get our objectives, and then we'll get out of here before it all gets a bit too tasty. We could actually leave at this point if we wanted to. That is allowed if you already achieved your objectives. Um, then from turn four onwards, you can get out of uh, dodge. But I'm going to hang tight and finish the game here. So I've gone through this turn quite quickly. Um, I got three early reactions. So these guys both tried to hack the terminal and succeeded. So I have scored one objective point. I then ran my corporal over to that one. Again, tried to hack but failed. Uh, the only contact on the table moved to here. Just getting a little bit closer. And then the slow phase, I moved up my fire team over there. And my colonial militia came off, the militia came off the building to move down here. So, going into turn seven now, I've got one of my objectives, I want to get the other one, and then I'll get out of dodge. In turn seven, um, no new contact, but quick actions. Corporal ran up there and failed again to activate the, uh, hack the objective. I moved the sergeant over here, just to get up a better position. He couldn't quite get to the contact. I moved this team down so they were ready. And then the contact moved, and it finally got an aggression. Uh, of five, so it actually moved towards me five inches, which allowed me to then spot it, of course, and immediately popped into a whole bunch of nasty undead. Uh, it's a d6 plus two, so I rolled a five, so there's seven of them, so I will have to deal with them. These guys have both all activated, so just my gunnery sergeant on this side and my fire team over there, who are too far away probably to make any difference. So, we'll see what happens. So my gunnery sergeant moved up behind this cover and fired one shot, taking out one of the zombies. The fire team then moved up to this tactical location here, entered the terminal and managed to get a distract. So no aliens within 18 inches may move in the next alien phase. That means these guys who are just inside 18 inches, in fact, it's not all of them, it's about four of them. I think a couple will move. So that's quite handy, of course, because um, the next alien phase will be next round. So that's the end of this round. There's nothing else to do now. Um, we will come back with the start of the next round, see if there's any contacts, any new contacts. No, it's only a six and priority one mission, of course. So only what's on the table. 
So turn eight, I didn't get any quick reactions, so I'm lucky that those four couldn't move. The ones that can have come forward to the closest targets, which is this colonial militia. So this one is going to fight here. I'll roll black for the um, for my guys and white for the uh, zombies. It's a straight up dice roll. They both have a combat of zero, so don't add anything to it. So the highest will win. And if they win, they will roll damage. It's toughness four for the zombies and toughness three for the colonial militia. So the zombie hits. And does it kill and he's a three or more? Yes! So one of my grunts is down. First blood. Uh, the second one over there. Uh, again, hits. Um, so, see, does it take down that one? No, it doesn't. So he's pushed back an inch and stunned. Which means he only get one action in the next uh, when he activates so um taking one down first blood to the zombies oh another thing i forgot to say so when a zombie is uh, a person is killed by a zombie they are replaced with another zombie so that colonial militiaman is now fighting back against me so in the slow phase the corporal failed again to uh get through that hack that objective um this team those that could uh, had two actions, retired, the other one stayed put, and they shot and took down their colleague. The These two guys just retired a little bit, give them a bit more space, fired onto the ones there. Only managed to stun one, which is not great. And then coming around the back here, this team, fire team, moved forward through the street, activated this tactical location, which would have removed a contact, but there aren't any contacts on the table at the moment. And one of the team members could fire down on the back of the zombies because he's got quite a long range with his gun but unfortunately wasn't able to do anything either so hmm not quite as much as i would have hoped to have done in that phase but we'll hopefully get some quick reactions so we can take some of those more zombies down before they mince the rest of my guys again so round nine uh, two quick reactions which i want to put on this fire t uh, the colonial militia here they managed to activate they all move uh stay as they actually this guy moved back and then they're able to get two shots, which actually took out two of those zombies, leaving them fairly clear. The other quick reaction I had, I put on the fire team, brought them out from around the building, and they fired down into the rear of these zombies, but only managed to pin one, because it's harder for them to hit now, because it's more than six inches away. It will now be the zombies who get to move, and they only move three inches. They will dash, but only to reach brawling. Um, these two at the front can't dash, so I might be alright, or they might just about get to my sergeant, and have to see in a second. So the stun ones couldn't reach, and the others were just out, as you can see. So what I've done is I've just moved these guys back a little bit, continuing to tactically withdraw. Uh, they fired and just put down one stun marker onto one of the front ones. Again, the corporal failed to activate that objective, so I need to get all this fire. I've got them fairly cornered now, but I need to get these quick reactions to try and take down some more of these zombies in the next round. And the start of round nine, uh, no new contacts. I got two quick reactions, so I used the Colonial Militia and the fire team will both come around and their combined fire has taken out all of the zombies. Okay, there are now no zombies left on the table. Um, I'm gonna have a quick check to see whether that does anything about uh, new contacts being made or anything like that, but I don't think it does. So everyone's just gonna head over to that objective over there and try and help the corporal out. And actually, they head over there, but they don't have to, because the corporal manages to do it on his own. He rolls a natural six. Uh, his tech doesn't, uh, doesn't need to help him. So I have secured my two objectives. I've hacked the two uh, bits of equipment. And now I just need to stay alive and extract my team, really. I have done pretty much everything I wanted to do. There's a couple of tactical locations I haven't been to. This one over here, that one over there. But they only really interact with contacts and aliens on the table. So because it's a low priority mission, it's a relatively safe mission, um, we haven't had to do anything. So we turn 11. Um, again, no new contact. Again, low priority, meaning that it's relatively safe for me here. No enemies are on the table. So not really any point in me rolling um, reactions because everybody will get to go before any aliens because there aren't any. So the goal here now is that I roll 2d6 and add the number of objectives I have uh, got. And if I get a 10 or more, I will be able to call in the rescue chopper and I can roll for any of my characters really they have to spend the whole turn doing that so what I'll do is I'll just roll for each of the five groups the fire team the colonial militia my three major characters uh, and if any of them get a combined result of 
8 plus 2 equals 10, then I'll be able to call the dropship in within 3 inches of the uh, team. So I'm going to start with these two guys because I'd ideally want the dropship to come in the center so that I then it stays for three turns and I have to get my guys there. So I don't want it to be right over by the corporal over the far side and then these guys have to trek all the way across if I can help it. And at the second time of asking, Sergeant DeLang brings down the uh, extraction ship. So all I need to do now is move the rest of my squad to get to uh, the base. I've got three turns to do that. Of course, I will continue to roll for um, contacts arriving, but I doubt that they're going to get anywhere close to me by the time I get off the table. And at the start of 12th turn, I did get a new contact for the first time in ages. Uh, and I've just gone through the things really. So everyone had already got close enough. The only ones who weren't were my uh, corporal and the sergeant really. Uh, but I rolled two ones for reaction, so they would get close enough. And although I did roll an aggression and this would have come to about here, I would still have got off fine. So my team has been extracted from the um, colony sensor. We found out, we've investigated this routine sweep and we found out what was going on and why it had gone dark because of some strange malady that had been affecting the local populace and turning them into zombies. Um, we'll take the information back and I suspect that we'll just nuke the whole place from orbit. Um, there is a campaign element to this, so I'll come back in a second and tell you how my major characters, if they've gained anything after this process. The Grunts, the fire team and the Colonial Militia, they don't do anything. They just sort of hide in for the day. So it's only the major characters who will benefit. So at the end of the mission, because it's a campaign, you do a little bit of extra stuff for experience. Um, but only for the major characters, the rest of the guys, the Grunts, don't count. So I ended up gaining four experience for everybody because um, I was successfully did the mission and nobody was injured. Um, I already had some experience with some of the development uh, backgrounds for the characters. So what you do is you spend five experience points, relatively simple, and you gain 0.5 of a stat. So the stats being uh, reaction, speed, combat, toughness, and tech. Um, by gaining... 0.5 you can't use that, you only use whole numbers in game, but obviously you get 2.5s, then obviously eventually you gain a new stat. Um, so we've got a small boost to uh, combat fighting for Gunnery Sergeant Hayden Frantizi on the left there. Uh, Sergeant Duron de Lang, um, they increased their combat to 1 because it was only 0.5 before. And Corporal Ludovic Tronowski on the right, she went up to a toughness of 4, so she's harder to kill. Now, um, they were all boosting up 0.5 stats that I already had from the character development. Um, I also then rolled on the operational um, roll to see what's happening in the greater sort of strategy of the war. It doesn't have a huge effect on the game, but it did actually end up that the enemy was counterattacking, so I will get minus 5 to future rolls, so less chance of having good outcomes in future operational rolls. Uh, and then you roll for one random character, which ended up being Gunnery Sergeant Hayden again, and they gain another random personal thing, and she ended up gaining another 0.5 to her speed. So she now has a speed of 4.5, so hopefully I'll boost that at some point to get her up to being a full 5, be able to use that in the game. Um, and that's it, really. That's all we do for this uh, session. So the campaign bit's a, a lot smaller or shorter sorry than in uh, five parsecs for instance but it's quite nice it keeps the feel of it being slightly more military rather than it being individual characters um so hopefully that was good i uh, hope you enjoyed it it was a relatively straightforward mission a low priority mission i think it was not very challenging from that point of view obviously you can see that the higher the priority rolling every turn multiple dice to see if counters appear you start to get swarmed relatively quickly i think um and I only had two objectives to get as well, so you know it wasn't that I was hanging around that long. So I think we'll see how the next game goes, see if it's a high priority one. Um, and obviously we may well face different aliens as well, you don't necessarily face the same one each time. So this was the first outing for the 17th Striking Snakes. And they have come out successfully. And we'll come back again at some point in the future. Thanks very much for watching guys. Take care. Uh, please check out the Way to Fire Hobby Hangout on Facebook. Check out the Way to Fire podcast. Thanks very much, everyone. Take care and bye.